So we are back with another episode. We're going to talk about games today, what we're playing very briefly. Then we get into our topic today. We're talking about game industry and development and how things have changed since we were kids in the 80s to now. And again, none of us are game developers. We might know people who are in game development, but we've all, I would say, pretty fairly well read and respectively Europe, Canada, America, Taiwan, that sort of stuff. So we'll be able to give you some at least historical insight into what's going on. All right, guys. So we should be talking about game dev or game dev story, which was, was the title of uh, today's episode. So Adam, uh, you're up first. Um, what are your thoughts on game development, uh, briefly speaking, in three three to four minutes? Uh, <clears throat> I think it's getting kind of it's. It, I think it's kind of splitting in two different directions because traditionally you would have, say, you know, a team of just a few people, maybe a dozen or so. And then, you know, they would make the original Mario game and you could create a new game once every year and, and you could, you know, get these development cycles. But now we're kind of going in two directions. It's it's kind of like the TV cell phone thing where screens are simultaneously getting bigger and smaller, but not staying in the middle as much. Um, because you have these huge development teams. I mean, I don't remember, uh, I think it was Final Fantasy 15 or something like that had like 500 people or something you know you're getting the teams of like 500 people on some of these games and other times you have indie devs that have like three guys making their own game so you know it's kind of you're getting these really big developed games but at the same time you're getting you know your average schmo can make a game i mean look at uh stardew valley for example you know where the guy just kind of makes it in, in his spare time but i i feel that it's in kind of a weird place because especially with the big devs there's a lot of pressure to release a game on time and obviously we have the crunch culture which is i mean that's that's across tech all of tech it's not just a video game thing but that was one thing that uh, when i was in university and, and studying uh because i studied computer science that was one thing that our, our professors would always tell us was you know you guys when this job is, is brutal where, you know, sometimes you're going to be at your office 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, you'll bring a sleeping bag into the office and you'll sleep under your desk. And that's just the reality of it. And you're going to do that for almost three months or so sometimes, you know, where you only go home one day a week or something like that. But then after a product launches, you'll have four week you know, you'll have four months of nothing to do. And so you're const you're constantly going between... Pretty typical work week, crunch time, off time. And so you don't have like a consistent work schedule in a way. Because uh, especially as as deadlines draw close. And, and a lot of games now are getting delayed. So I don't know if that's affecting crunch time where it's just a longer crunch time now. Where it's like, oh, we're delaying the game. But then we're not, it's not actually easing up on the developers. It's just means that they're going to be working for an, you know at the same pace. Um, I know there have been some controversies, like, for example, at CD Projekt Red and that sort of thing with uh, the crunch culture and all that. But at the same time, it's it's a weird thing because obviously players expect their games to be released on time. And I mean, this is just that's kind of the way it has to be done. I mean, the only other option is just to not give release dates at all and just say, you know, the game's coming and just be patient and then it'll be ready when it's ready. But I don't think uh, I, I don't think that's really viable for a couple of reasons i mean one i don't i don't feel like gamers themselves are the most understanding group of people <laughs> uh and i don't think they'd be very happy with just saying like it's coming just wait but also i think you know as far as marketing goes you know like the marketing team needs to know when a game's coming out so they they can you know work accordingly i mean if if you're telling the marketing team it'll be ready when it's ready you know they, they only have a few weeks from when you're done to when it's releasing so they don't have enough time to prepare but if you don't give them a time, you know, the, the alternative is they prepare way too early. You know, they get a lot of hype and then it just all news of it dies because, you know, progress is it, still far out. So I, I think there's just more. I think it's more than just the gamers putting pressure on them. I think it's just, you know, marketing and all that as well. Uh, 
And then a lot of games now are going into what do you call it? Not pre-release, but uh, early access. Early access, yeah. So a lot of games now are going into early access, where you pay for the game and or you pay for the beta, <laughs> and then uh, yeah. So kind of my take on it. I don't know. Like I don't really have an opinion. I just think that's the way it is. <laughs> sure, Antoine. What do you think? What's your oh, yeah, experience so far? Uh, I don't have much experience in there, but let's just uh, take a step back. Uh, I originally proposed this sim because, like every gamer when they're a kid, I'm sure it was the same for you, uh, when you're a kid and you are a gamer and you love games, you are thinking, oh, when, I, when I'm a grown-up, I want to make video games. And that's a lofty goal and everything. Honestly, I'm not here to destroy your dreams. I'm not here for that. <laughs> I just want to put into context that playing games and making games are two very different things. For instance, one of my friends was like me, uh, gamers, he wanted to plan to play in, a, to, to, to go into the gaming industry. And as part of, uh, we, we did business school and as part of um, our courses, we needed to do six months abroad. And he ended up uh, working at Blizzard in Cork uh, in Ireland for uh, as a uh, as a tester beta tester and uh, he didn't like the experience at all i don't know how blizzard treated his, his employees but he was telling me that uh, it's not the best experience of uh, of his life and uh, after a few months i said like ah that's it i'm i'm quitting this just it's just not for me so i just want to put this into context you know if you want to go into the game industry know what you're into right now and i read a few articles about it you know we always say at least lately i, I don't know if it was the same uh, 20 years ago but lately we say gaming industry working in the gaming industry is toxic it's terrible even even more so for women and it's very much actuality here because i'm in montreal and in montreal we have plenty of studios hey those uh, Ubisoft, uh, Bethesda, etc. Et There's plenty of them here. So we can hear it or read it in the papers pretty often. And uh, there was a lady who was um, a developer or a programmer, sorry, and she was explaining a few things. First of all, if you're not working for AAA, so the AAA is the Marvel industry of, you know, the industry, uh, obviously, because they don't want to take risk with the license. They want to make money. Why? Because if you're a mid-size or small indie studio, doing a game which doesn't work means your studio's dead. So the actual job security is not good unless you're working for a AAA. And there's lots of pressure and lots of turnaround in there. So that's part of the fact that, uh, you know, the ambience, see, uh, in a team is not necessarily very good because you don't, uh, like in my job, most people are here four years, five years. In my previous job, I was there 10 years and some of my colleagues were like 15, 20 years. It's not, apparently, it's not something you will see in a developing game team. That's a year maybe at most because there's a lot of turnaround. There's a lot of... Uh, it's, and from what I understand, I don't have data, so this is something to, to check out. But for a programmer, the gaming industry is not where you actually make the most moolah. You, you can make much more money on as a private sector, still you know, doing coding. So that's another thing. So going into the gaming industry as a programmer, you're doing because you have passion of doing video games. And it can be, and uh, you know, this lady was saying, there's a couple of things. First of all, when you're a programmer, you are thinking, I'm going to make the next Elder Scroll. <laughs> not necessarily. You can make the next Just Dance, whether you like it or not. You know, if you don't like dancing and your boss say, you, we are working on Just Dance uh, 2023, uh, you are working on this, whether you like it or not. And that's, uh, that's not a six-month project. Huh? <laughs> that's a two, three, four, five years project. So, you know knowing that if you're going there and you're like, I'm going there because I want to make great video game. Unless you're indie, you don't choose the one you work on. Or at least I don't think. And I'd love to have someone who actually worked in one of these teams to tell me, is that true? Is that how it works? From my, from my understanding, is how it works. So 
when you, when we say that gaming industry is toxic, of course, it's the same everywhere. It's not the industry which is toxic. It's some of the companies in there which don't have the best uh, working environment. Definitely some companies will do things right. Some do things wrong. And you need maybe before you start you know, doing your CV, maybe check which company you are going into. For instance, if you want to go to Ubisoft Canada, Montreal, uh, read a few papers first. Because... <laughs> Or, or, you know, put a helmet and know that uh, for a few years, whew, it's going to be tough. <laughs> it can be tough. Because you, you read a lot of articles about programmers going into depression because the job is just too tough. You don't have family life. And uh, imagine, and of course it happens a lot, because as you said, the gaming community, especially if you think of a community like League of Legends, is not really forgiving. So you work five years of your life on a game. You know, you crush, you have lots of, you, you make lots of sacrifices just to have a, oh, this game is so shy, the poof, next. All right, we need to keep that's, going. That's going. depressing. Going. Yeah, yeah, if you want, but okay. So just, if you go into the industry, you have to know, you know, what you're getting into. And I'm not saying this to depress you. No, if, if it's your dream, go for it. Just, you know, like everything, read a bit before inform yourself and then take you know an, uh, a decision just don't go i love video games i'm gonna do that that's a lofty goal but yeah you know think of it first